What's up, people? While well, everybody continues to talk about the things that don't matter, like Drake's new album and all this other stuff, we're going to talk about what's really important, the NFL Draft. Now, before I get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't do it for me. Do it for you. Do it for your future. Do it for your soul. Now, since I'm sure you've done that already, let's get into this draft. I'm not going to talk about the whole draft, really. I'm just going to talk about the... Philadelphia Eagles first round pick I will talk about the Lions first round pick because that's my favorite team but it was pretty and pretty much made sense and it was kind of boring so I'm going to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles first round pick Carson Wentz now doesn't make any sense to me because I feel like you could get some pretty good quarterbacks in a year and draft a bunch of pieces right now rather than trade like five draft picks I believe two first round draft picks for this quarterback this year and then if he doesn't pan out then what so let me tell you why I don't necessarily well first let me tell you why other people like Carson Wentz People say Carson Wentz has an it factor, which is just a filler word for I like him, but I don't necessarily know why I like him or see why I like him. But people say he has that it factor. People say he's a really good quarterback. Even though he's in Division One AA, where he has he did dominate Division One AA, but let me explain a reason why he dominated Division One AA. So I'm going to tell you some facts that other people may not be telling you about that North Dakota State team. So, North Dakota State, they are four-time Division I AA national champions, yes. These Division I national championships, or Division I AA national championships, were all won while Carson Wentz was there. Yes. But... He only played in two of them, I believe. The first two years, or actually, he was there for five years. His first year, he was redshirted. They didn't win. The second two years, he was there. He played a little bit, but that was just to get his legs under him, give him some time, you know, give him some some game, uh, some like to help him get acclimated to the college game. Primarily 2012-2013, when North Dakota State won their first two national championships of their four, he didn't play in those games. Which means that North Dakota State, when he was starting on the team his last two years, they already had the pieces to be the best team in Division One AA college football. Which means he's kind of like Greg McElroy or... Uh, A.J. McCarron, in a sense, where he was just a quarterback that they could plug in into that system and still succeed because they had pieces around him that was just better than all of the other players in Division One AA football. Now, he did have some pretty good numbers his two year in 2014. He threw for 3,111 yards, 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. It's not bad. Uh, he went 228 for 358 in passing. Not bad. 642 rushing yards, 6 touchdowns. Not bad. But that's nothing fantastic. In 2015, he didn't even play the whole season because he broke his wrist. And he didn't come back until uh, until the national championship game now those pretty average numbers were in the division one double a yes he did win a national championship in the division one double a but he didn't pick apart defenses he didn't dominate like you'd want a uh a second pick overall to dominate he didn't dominate like Jameis winston dominated Division one single A. He didn't dominate like Andrew Luck or RG three dominated Division one single A. 
he just did well enough for his team with talent already around him to win the national championship. Now, I'm going to read out some stats from some Division One single A quarterback prospects that are that were in the draft this year. Brian Dowdy of Western Kentucky threw 540 times, completed 388, nine interceptions, 48 uh, touchdowns, 5,055 yards. Pretty good. Matt Johnson out of Bowling Green, 569 attempts, 383 completions, eight interceptions, 46 touchdowns, 4,946 yards. Pretty good. Jared Goff, the number one overall pick. I mean, there's no way the Eagles could have gotten him. 529 passing attempts, 341 completions, 13 interceptions, 43 touchdowns, 4,719 yards. There are multiple quarterbacks on this list of Division I single-A talents who have had better seasons than Carson Wentz that have played against higher talent. So, why did the Eagles choose to get Watson or Wentz? I'm sorry, why did the Eagles choose to get Wentz? And why did the Eagles choose to uh, get Wentz? This year, I'm sorry, I was looking at Deshaun Watson. That's why I said Watson. I was looking at Deshaun Watson's stats. It doesn't make any sense to me. Here's what I would have done if I was the Eagles. So, here's probably what the Eagles were thinking. Eagles were probably thinking we'd either want Carson Wentz or we want Ezekiel Elliott. Number two overall, and trading all of those draft picks is way too much to get Ezekiel Elliott. So if we're going to trade up, we're going to trade up for Carson Wentz. And we can't get Ezekiel Elliott at the draft pick that we have now. So, and there's nobody else who we want in the first round. So it's either all for Wentz, or we just trade down and get as many draft picks as we can get. Now, if I was them, I would have traded down and get as, got as many draft picks as I can get. And then next year, you could try to get quarterbacks such as Deshaun Watson or a quarterback from Ohio State whose name I'm forgetting for some reason. But there are so many good quarterbacks who you could get. Like hell, if you really wanted to, you could draft like Jake Rudock or somebody in the fourth round. What's the difference between him and Carson Wentz? I think that Jake Rudock has that it factor. I mean, he went to Michigan in a year. He started off pretty bad early because he was learning the offense. But in a year, he helped that team get to... 10 winning Jim Harbaugh's first year. There are so many different quarterback talents that you that you could get in this draft or the draft the next year, but for some reason the Eagles decided to trade away all of their draft picks, put all of their eggs in one basket, and go after this guy Carson Wentz. I'm not saying he's going to be bad. I'm just simply asking, is he worth it? And I'm asking, is he better than all of these other quarterback talents that's in in this draft and that will be in the next year's draft that the Eagles could have gotten? I don't know. I don't see that it factor that everyone else has seen. I see pretty good football mechanics. I see he has a nice eye. He's pretty athletic. He's tall, but you don't know if he could do that against elite talent, elite athlete. Those passing windows get a lot smaller the more talented players you play against. 
And we already saw that he was playing. Already proved he was playing with the best talent in Division One Double A. So that made those passing windows even bigger for him. Only time will tell, right? This has been King Delta Seven signing off. Remember, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would love for you guys to comment in the comment section, comment your opinions on the Eagles draft pick, comment your opinions on your team's draft, your favorite team's draft. This doesn't just have to be Eagles talk. I just talked about the Eagles because that was the most interesting story coming out of the first round of the NFL draft. This is Keen Dub signing off. Peace.